be honest. These are the kind of trials that you want to be in, isn't it? As oh, even as a non-athlete, I wish I was 10 years younger and still at it. Every year the British trials are fantastic because it's the same as the US trials, the Jamaican trials, wherever you're from. You have to perform on that weekend to gain selection to represent your country at the biggest show on earth, the Olympics. So the Olympic trials are even more special than the European Championship trials, the Commonwealth trials, whatever it may be. There's no hiding the fact that everyone has to bring their A-game. Everyone's going to have to run, jump, throw better than ever before to make the team. And for me, I've got great memories from the trials. Um, 96 Olympic trials, it was a time when domestically the 400 was such a strong event. I came third running 44-6. Last year, the World Championships were won in 44-6. It just shows you how tough it can be. And, you know, I, and I think it's an opportunity to, to shine and put the frighteners up, not only your domestic rivals, but the world. The world would be watching the British trials this year. Let's, let's take your event for a second. I know Martin Rooney's already put down a 44-9. Um, he's going to be one to watch come the trials, isn't he? I mean, that was his second race. Yeah, Martin Rooney has to be the guy to beat at the moment. Um, but listen, that's the beauty of sport. There will be someone out there. There will be like a young Chris Clark, someone like that who's raw talent, who will come out on the trials and step up. And that's what needs to happen because it's all very well for, for, for people like Martin and, and you know, make the individual. That's first and foremost. But in the back of Martin's mind as well, will be he needs three good teammates for that 4x4. Four four. And traditionally, you know, I, I'm talking back now, in 1996, we smashed the European record in the Atlanta final. We ran 2.56.5 for the 4x4, four four, which is frighteningly quick. I'm a lover of the sport. This is my sport. I want to see the guys push those kind of times. So it's going to be fantastic. The trials, I'm going to be there. I, I, I love it. It's just one of those moments where that is pressure. That's what sport is all about. The pressure of the trials, even just to make the team, is huge. Once you've got the trials out of the way, you can almost relax a little bit. You're on, you're on the plane, I'd like to say, but you're not because we're in London. But they are on the plane because they're going to Portugal warm up training. But, you know, you've just got to make that team. You've got to make the Olympic team because if you don't, it's another long four years to wait. What's the crowd going to be like on that day? The crowd will be awesome. The crowd will be up for it. I think every lover of sport knows and is aware of the importance of the trials, you know, and it, we, we've seen it in other sports and we will see it in swimming, we'll see it in all the other team sports where you've got to do well to make the team and athletics is no exception. It's a very, very dog-eat-dog world out there. It's a competitive race and I'm hoping the 400 will be very competitive. I want to see Martin run even quicker. I want to see the other guys run under 45 seconds. So, being, being a, got honestly, there's a, there's a few guys this year. Nigel's run well indoors. You've got Richard Strachan, you've got Richard Buck. You've got Chris Clark, you've got Andrew Steele, who's a very talented lad, had a lot of problems with injuries and sickness. Well, yeah, as well. Exactly, people have watched the indoors. I used to not do the indoors, and I'd watch it, and I'd see the likes of Jamie Bolsh smashing the indoors, and I'd get itchy feet thinking, oh, come on, give me the outdoors season, I want to be out there. So everybody who didn't do the indoors will be training twice as hard, and the trials are going to be big. Tell me one thing that goes on as you approach your event, be it you know, the 400 in your case, javelin, whatever, 100 metres, whatever that goes on that, you know, the average fan doesn't see? What goes through the, the mind of the athlete? The average fan will not see the warm-up track. The average fan won't see the psychological side of sport, the, the eyeballing your opponents as you're getting your kit taken away for the last Even time. Even on the domestic level, that goes on, well, right? Big star. Mm. Yeah, I used to eyeball Mike Richardson, he used to try and eyeball me, and, you know, it'd be, you know, sometimes a race is won and lost before you even hear on your marks, because... You've almost got to get that psychological edge, you know, and, and the trials is also interesting. It's not just one race. You've got the rounds to get through and you want to look as good in the rounds as you can, but expend as least amount of energy as possible. So it's all about getting through the rounds, pretending you're OK, cool, walking off the track, looking back, thinking, yeah, that 45 didn't hurt. And then even if it did, pretend it didn't and come back to the final and, and just step it up even more. So a lot goes on behind the scenes. I'm not saying nastiness, but I'm just saying psychological, the war. It's, it, it's, it's like a game of chess. One of them, it is. You, you know, it's sportsmanship. It's not a bad thing, but you, you've got to let, you know, let your rivals know you're there to do business. And listen, as much as you, you want to see other teammates run well, they could be stopping you go to the Olympics. So as much as I used to like Mark, I used to like Jamie, I used to like Roger, when you walk out on that track, they're not my friends. They're people trying to stop me booking my place on the Olympic team. There, there's no friends in track and field when you're here on your marks. Thanks, Dizan.